Beanie and welcome to my Curacao travel vlog where I will share how me and my fiance spent four fantastic days on the island of Curacao. Ever since I was a child, the Caribbean has been our family's happy place. My mom was a travel agent growing up, so we were blessed to see so much of the world through her job. Having been to Aruba before, we decided to check out her next door neighbor and also a member of the ABC Islands, Curacao. Curacao is only a short 30 minute flight from Aruba. In this video, I'll show you what we saw, what we ate, and tips and tricks to help you make the most out of your trip to Curacao. We spent four days exploring the island and it was definitely not enough time, so we will absolutely be back. On day one, my fiance and I took a pond hopper flight from Aruba flying Divi Divi Air. Divi Divi Air, you may ask? It's an extremely small regional service airline in Curacao established in 2001. It primarily flies between the ABC Island. Having only really booked with big name airlines before, I was kind of nervous about booking with Divi. Being the crazy travel planner I am, I actually called twice to see if our flight was still happening. Our flight on Divi ended up being perfect and we arrived early to the island. The flight itself was so fun because we normally don't fly on such a small plane. For this flight, we ended up paying $250 round trip. While this may seem expensive for a 30 minute flight, direct flights to Curacao from major east coast US airlines can cost you upwards of $1,000. I truly believe Curacao is an undiscovered gem for American tourists because we could have counted on our fingers the amount of American tourists we ran into while on the island. While I do think being expensive is the main reason Aruba is more popular than Curacao, there are also a couple of things I read online before I arrived to the island. Something to be aware of is that parts of Curacao can be sketchy and are popular spots for petty crime, including armed robbery. Car break-ins are common among rental cars, so we never left any valuables in the car, especially in the most remote parts of the island. While many of the beaches do have security guards in the parking lots, I'd still highly recommend not leaving any valuables in your car. The resorts and downtown Curacao are filled with tourists and I never felt unsafe for one moment of the trip despite what I read online. Just keep your wits about you just like you would any other location and you'll be fine. Right when we landed in Curacao, we picked up our rental car and checked into our hotel, which was the Renaissance Wind Creek Curacao. It is located directly in the heart of Willemstad and very close to many prime locations. As a Marriott loyalist, I was between here and the other Marriott property and I am so excited that we chose the Renaissance Wind Creek Curacao because it completely exceeded my expectations and was a great place to stay. After we checked in, we beelined it and headed directly to the pool to have a cocktail and lay by the beach slash pool. It was so nice to lounge around and the beach is man-made with an infinity pool that goes straight to the ocean. After lounging about, we headed to downtown Willemstad, which is only a short walk over the famous floating Queen Emma Bridge. This bridge is extremely unique in that it actually is floating. The bridge is a pontoon bridge across St. Anna Bay and Curacao. It connects the Punda and Otrabanda neighborhoods of Willemstad. It was named after Emma of Waldeck in Piermont, who was the queen of the Netherlands while it was being built. We wander around the city for a while and was so colorful and each street is so unique. After that, we walked to the Peter Mai district, which happens to be my favorite area of Curacao, and we went back multiple times while we were here. We had happy hour at Mundo Bazaro, which is Curacao must do. This old school Cuban style spot is the island's most photographed bar. The vibe is super chill and once a week they have live music and the bar turns into a party spot. After Mundo Bazaro, we walked a little further to my favorite restaurant in Curacao. Mosa Cana is a European fusion and Latin Caribbean tapas restaurant that serves dishes and drinks that are meant to be shared. We love this spot and whereas the city of Willemstad seemed rather quiet, there were lines out the door to dine here. I recommend making reservations ahead of time and they take them through their WhatsApp number right here. After that, we walked home back across the Queen Emma floating bridge and hit the hay for the night. We had a relatively early start on day two in Curacao and decided to explore the island. After talking with locals, we were pointed to visiting West Punt and the western part of the island and all of their majestic beaches. We drove about 45 minutes to the northwestern part of the island to Chete Boca National Park. This park is absolutely gorgeous and has so much to offer. You seriously shouldn't miss it if you're going to Curacao. We got to the park just after opening at 9 a.m and we were almost the only ones into the entire national park. To enter Chate Boca, it costs $5.50 in US currency and $5.22 in euros. They also give you a map of the park and it'll show you exactly where the highlights of the national park are. Depending how much time you have, you can either walk or hike the entire thing or you can drive to each spot. We opted to do a mix of both and we started at Boca Tabla and the cave. Then we walked to the natural bridge, also known as Boca Wandomi, as the locals say. After that, we walked back to 
our car and stopped at two other spots, Boca Kaki, which is a beautiful beach, and then Boca Pistol, which is named after the shooting sound that is heard with the bashing of waves along the inlet. It was really neat to see, and I couldn't stop taking videos of the waves crashing against the coast. After we left Boca Chete, we made our way to Playa Forte restaurant for lunch. I'm so glad we got here relatively early because by the time we left, every table was full. This beautiful restaurant provides panoramic views of Playa Forte, but that is not the main reason to visit. This spot is known for its 40 foot cliff that you can jump off into crystal blue water. I was so nervous to jump, but I'm so glad I did it because it was such a crazy experience. It was so exhilarating, but I recommend wearing shoes and keeping straight so you don't get injured hitting the water. After Playa Forte, we wanted to get back in the water, so we drove over to Playa Lagoon and rented snorkels for less than $10 each at the shop across from the beach. We snorkeled around the reefs of Playa Lagoon for a long time, and it was so beautiful, and the beach was completely packed with tourists and people enjoying the hot Caribbean sun. After Playa Lagoon, we drove over to Playa Jarami and sat in the rocks slash sand. The entire beach is made up of sea glass and very soft soft rocks, so it was a really great place to lounge out and explore. Our next beach we drove over to was called Playa Grande, also known as Playa Pescado. It is a beach that is known for its sea turtle inhabitants. As you reach this beach, you will see a sign on the tree saying Playa Pescado, and then also a tree that they painted an octopus on. You can park directly on the street there, and if there's no parking there, you can drive up the road to a bigger parking lot and take the stairs down to the beach we had no trouble finding parking right along the road. This beach is a fisherman's beach. There are a couple chairs you can rent, but it is known for always having sea turtles visiting to catch leftover fish thrown in daily by fishermen. The turtles know this is the spot for an easy dinner, so they are constantly swimming in and out of this beach. We counted over 15 turtles and had a blast spending time swimming with these beauties. And whatever you do, please do not touch the turtles. They just wanna enjoy their dinner. After visiting all the beaches that we could, we ended up returning our snorkels back where we got them and headed over to Curacao's best sunset spot, Kokomo Beach. Entrance was free and this super cool beach club had several bars as well as a restaurant. The bar was popping when we got there and it was entirely filled with Dutch tourists. We watched one of the most gorgeous sunsets here while listening to live music and enjoying the incredible ambiance. We opted to have a quick drink because we weren't too hungry yet and ended up casually sitting next to the famous Dutch DJ, Hardwell. It took me a moment to recognize him and I was totally starstruck because he was so nice. 14 year old Kristen really loved Hardwell. Next, we went to freshen up at the hotel before heading out to our destination for the evening, Mambo Beach. We had dinner at the Green Turtle, which is actually like four different restaurants in one. This is a great spot if you're with a group and you all can't decide on what you want for dinner because you can literally order off all of the different menus there. I ordered a mediocre ramen and Noah got sushi that he was a big fan of. After dinner, we walked down to the beach club and danced the night away with Dutch interns until we couldn't do it anymore. After a fun night out, we opted to get brunch in the morning at a spot I found on Instagram called Cafe 5999. While this spot is not directly located in Willemstad, we were driving around anyway to get to our next destination, so we decided to stop here and it was awesome. I had an incredible latte and avocado toast. It totally hit the spot as we were gonna be quite active for the rest of the day. We made our way over to the next spot, which was Fort Beaconburg. This quick stop is so cool and was not on our original itinerary, but I'm so glad we stopped because I got some of the best pictures here. Fort Beaconburg was originally built in 1703 to defend the, at the time, Spanish water. The fort helped keep the British, the French, and the pirates out of Curacao. Right next to Fort Beaconburg, we drove to Tugboat Beach, which was one of my favorite places in all of Curacao. Here you can snorkel out to see a sunken tugboat that has been in the same spot for over 30 years. The boat sunk accidentally and is now overrun with gorgeous coral and tropical fish. Some people even see octopi here. We didn't. We were able to rent gear from Tugboat Beach Bar, which was a super cool spot. After that, we had a beautiful snorkeling adventure. We grabbed some drinks at Tugboat Beach Bar and returned our gear. We flew our drone around the area and circled over an abandoned quarantine center, which felt very fitting post COVID-19. Caracas Bay Quarantine Building was built in 1883 after the area was designated a quarantine station for ships with contagious people on board their vessels. Spooky. We ended our last full day by spending some R&R &R at the Jantiel Beach. We had a fantastic lunch at Coco's, which is at the far right and way less crowded side of the beach. I had the dreamiest cocktail of my life called an apple Cena split. 
It was like an ice cream pina colada and I will never get over it. We rented beach chairs not knowing how much they would cost directly in front of the restaurant and lounged around sipping our apple cena splits. We did not end up being charged for these chairs so that was a win and entrance to the beach was only $2.50 a person. We went back to our hotel to enjoy the last sunset of vacation at our hotel pool bar. After that we headed back out to Peter Mai district to try an Italian restaurant I had my eyes on a couple days ago. When we were walking back from dinner Queen Emma was open for a large oil tanker headed out to sea. Since the bridge was closed, we took the free ferry back to Otrobanda. If the bridge happens to be opening while you're on it, you will get trapped until the boat that needs to go by is gone and the bridge is closed again. We saw some unlucky folks who didn't make it in time or chose to stay on it for 45 minutes. Why? Why'd you do that? On our last day, we didn't have an entire day to spend in Curacao because we had to catch our flights back to Aruba and then back to Washington, DC. We spent our final hours walking the streets of Willemstad and shopping for souvenirs for family and friends. The city was way more bustling and lively during the day because there was a cruise ship docked with tons of tourists walking around the streets, which meant every souvenir shop was open as well as every restaurant. After that, we made our way over to Plaza View, which was the old market, and the new market are Marche, Nobo, and Papiamento. Here we found locally made crafts and gifts as well as food vendors. We tried several different cuisines including Surinamese dishes and I had the best smoothie of my life from one of the stands here for only $5. We had one final stop at the Van Gogh Cafe for brunch and it was a great way to end our amazing time in Curacao. As we walked back to our hotel, we already started planning our return trip to this hidden gem in the Caribbean. So this concludes my first travel vlog to the beautiful island of Curacao. If you liked my first video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This is the first of many videos I plan to share with you all in the upcoming months, so stick along and thanks for joining. I hope you have a great time visiting the island of Curacao. Travel safely and pasa un bon dia and masha danki.